think. Well, thanks, uh, Martin, for giving us this interview opportunity and that you agreed to give us uh, your own perspectives on the CADEP agenda and the implementation status. Um, many countries conducted roundtables so far and did their sector planning and programming by now. Can you tell us where CADEP is at right now in terms of operationalization on the ground? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pasco, for this opportunity. Um, and uh, coming to your question, we have seen actually very rapidly increasing momentum in terms of action and also interest at country level to engage in CADAP implementation. As we speak now, out of the 54 countries, we have over 40 countries that are already formally committed and engaging on the CADAP implementation. Out of the over 40, about 53, set of them have signed their national compact, which is an important milestone in the process to engage on the CADAP implementation. Uh, and out of those 30, 23 of them have gone as far as the finalizing their investment plans and gone through what we call the independent technical review of the investment plan and basically focusing on the implementation of programs along the priorities identified in those investment plans. We also have um, actually out of those 23, we have about 9, 15 of them that uh, have had very significant financing uh, into specific programs within those uh, investment plans or program and investment plans. I should also mention that uh, at the moment in terms of uh, CADAP implementation, uh, there is also the growing focus on the uh, supporting uh, strengthening and alignment of capacities at country level, implementation for execution of programs, and also for tracking performance, both for purposes of assessing impact, but also identifying lessons uh, and uh, supporting the learning that goes with that. That is very much at the operational uh, and, and the kind of a uh, physical level but probably you want me to just put a, a little bit of explanation to what is actually in essence going on behind yes. the investment plans, behind the, the compacts. Yes. What we see yeah. is actually four things. One is we are seeing in a very, very practical way countries coming up to, to, to embrace planning and respect for knowledge, respect for data, for information, uh, ultimately uh, uh, committing to evidence-based analysis in the way that we have been seeing over several days. So you see actually uh, the form and kind of planning systems and the capacity to plan and the energy to ensuring appropriate planning mechanisms uh, actually being strengthened and aligned. We also see a different conversation between the stakeholders, both in terms of what is public sector doing uh, and saying, and how is it engaging the other state and non-state institutions around that uh, what I would call a common vision on uh, agriculture development. So the other area, apart from I mentioned the issue of commitment to evidence-based analysis, Another area you see is the commitment to inclusiveness, to uh, collective responsibility, and actually going out of the way to look at uh, the synergies, complementarities, and building much more comprehensive strategies and, the, and the program support. We also see a growing commitment, or you may want to say recommitment, to, uh, to accountability. Uh, both in terms of uh, asking ourselves and the increasingly so, where are the results, what is the performance, what about the value for money. So 
So you'll find quite uh, uh, robust discussions appearing and very much linked into uh, solid analysis, solid evidence on what is uh, happening. But uh, also on the fourth point, you see also governments, if you look at within governments, that are actually being much more realistic, much more uh, definite in terms of what does financing agriculture mean? And also, how do we then place the public sector financing, not just as financing into agriculture, but also how does it support to leverage private sector financing and actually support not just welfare directly, but supporting a broad-based socioeconomic growth agenda, which also uh, you see now that the discussion around agriculture versus uh, job creation, agriculture versus wealth creation, sort of getting a very real meaning and, uh, and interpretation in terms of what the countries are doing and would like to do. Now, Kareb has been around for quite some time now, and looking back at the progress that's been made so far, there's also obviously some criticism that could be taken constructively. What could have been done better, Martin? Yes, there are some elements we know that uh, could have been done differently, could have been done better. But there are also some things we've seen that uh, in the circumstances we were, probably, yes, we did not, for instance, give as much uh, focus into the policy directly the policy issues, policy elements, in terms of strengthening the policy design systems, in terms of assessment of quality of policies themselves, and also ensuring that there is a broad-based analytical work that can look at, do we have appropriate policies in place, how do we support them and support their implementation, but also just the mechanism that is saying, how do we actually get appropriate policies to identify those issues, problems that are emerging. We, we also probably have not given, and I'm talking about very direct, deliberate effort into the whole institutional architecture for supporting implementation, uh, including uh, how do we build the uh, 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 multi-party, multi-stakeholder implementation arrangements, uh, what about the levels of competences uh, are, are existing in our institutions and related again to issues of accountability and all that. But uh, it's also true on the other hand that uh, uh, those may have been difficult places in the audit in terms of who beginning with that. But the, 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 the support to conduct implementation kind of by default went and focused on the investment plan and the planning processes and planning capacity and all that. And uh, apparently in most countries it has emerged that with the investment plans in place, then you are in a better position, a much more credible, trustworthy platform and fora to actually get a conversation policy, to get a conversation on institutional uh, arrangements, institutional architecture. Uh, uh, and this also to that uh, in most cases, beginning a conversation on the policy issues uh, immediately became political, became difficult to actually move ahead. Um, we also actually appreciate that uh, uh, there are elements around uh, how much have we emphasized domestic resources and the financing, uh, and how well can we actually support countries to look inward in terms of uh, inward into the continent, into the countries, about investment financing, about capacity for especially private sector financing. Well, as there's a clear uh, resolve within startup in terms of 10% for public expenditure, which was also a demonstration of the, 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 the country's commitment to use only resources. Uh, but probably what is outstanding is the how well have we and how well is CADAP actually supporting countries to realize that uh, resolve in a very concrete manner and in sustainable manner? And I'm talking about uh, building 
uh, a capital base, resource base uh, from the state resources that can then stand up front so that when you're talking about foreign direct investments, for instance, when you're talking about uh, external financing, it actually comes in into large and the complement that domestic capital base. While we're talking about uh, things could have been done better, there's also an important point about CADEP. There's a, a huge amount of investment that comes through the donors. So what would you say in terms of the relationship with the donors? Uh, what could have been done better from the donor side and also maybe from the NPCA side towards the donors? Yes, <laughs> one of the major character in terms of business unusual or unique in CADAP is the issue around the relationships and partnerships. Uh, and one of the things that has been clear is that uh, over the years, and we, it's becoming much more definite now, and it's triggered by things like uh, the uh, global financial, uh, I don't know if you want to call it crisis, or so what we are seeing in recent times in terms of financial, global financial uh, 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 disruptions or uh, uncertainties and uh, also what is happening in, in Europe at the moment. So it is very, very clear that one, development financing as we have known it in terms of development aid is not going to be the same, both in terms of flows of amounts that can, can flow, but also the instruments, the decision-making arrangements that go with that. Uh, and and the two, uh, we have discussed enormously the issue of uh, development effectiveness. And in fact, if you look into the NEPAD principles, the CADA principles, you find that in, even before the Paris Declaration, Africa was already making some very broad statements about uh, effectiveness in the in the development partnerships, about the uh, 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 not just the local African responsibility and ownership, but also that we were going to and we need to see a much more mutual partnerships, which are not just about supporting a disadvantaged country or continent, but about the partnership that look at what do we mutually gain out of that flow of resources either way. And therefore, in NEPAD, in CADAP, and also the whole continent in terms of advancing uh, CADAP implementation, one of the things that has emerged is looking inward is that countries are becoming much more clear, much more definite, much more strong about putting on the table an African agenda or a local national agenda on, uh, on agriculture. And they also look linking to evidence analysis linking to capacity uh, on analysis, you find that then they are able to engage a much more robust negotiation, uh, even in terms of private sector financing uh, on what is the agenda and what do they need or want to do. We, in terms of actual, especially bilateral relationship, there's still a lot that needs to be done on the uh, speaking the same language. I think we, we have slogans that uh, are good and mean very well in terms of uh, uh, local ownership, development effectiveness, and all that. But it's more and more uh, how do we translate that into uh, reality, into the character of the partnership. And I also want to acknowledge here that you are talking about partnerships and relationships that have built over several decades. So they're not going to go away in a, in a flash. But uh, at least uh, those uh, very small but quite significant steps are being taken. And I think I can mention also here that some of these things are happening and very well, but they are still very, very fragile and they can disappear with the, uh, inappropriate uh, interventions or inappropriate uh, policy decisions. And that is why we are, want to cast cut up more and more in terms of identifying these small uh, significant steps 
and actually ensure that they are supported, uh, they are uh, strengthened, that we can bring such practices to a critical mass uh, and ensure that there's value, not just that, that community, country, or discipline, but actually spread as the collective capacity across the country. Okay, thank you. I, just one more thing. Um, what comes to my mind here is the question whether CADAP can actually succeed without any substantial institutional change. What do you think, both on the African institution side and on the donor institution side? Or do you think that this uh, is actually an ideological question more? No, I think it's, uh, that is what we are dealing with in the, in the, in the sustaining cut up momentum. I mm. said what you are saying there is that uh, inherent in the, poly, in, the, in the principles and the targets of CADA is actually very clear reform objectives, transformation objectives. And they are kind of coming up a lot more now because we are saying uh, we have the investment plans, uh, we are getting financing, but is that enough to deliver results? And uh, uh, ideologically also you may say the answer is no, because we also need the institutions and we need to sustain what we are achieving and what you, to, achieve, to sustain that and also support that flow going forward. Then uh, the issue of institutional transformation, institutional reform actually is part of the core foundation for uh, taking CADAP and agriculture uh, development forward. And in fact, a lot of what I mentioned in the beginning in terms of what is being achieved in the background of the investment plan is linked to this transformation agenda. And that is why we are saying now we have to look at the policies, we have to look at the institutions, because without that, then you still actually can achieve, for instance, 6%, but you will not be able to sustain it. And therefore, even the whole equation changes. It's not just about achieving 6%. It's about the building capacity to achieve 6%. Okay. Thank you very much, Martin.